Uncle C back in the office. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you specifically how to get a woman completely obsessed with you. Now, what I like to call this is I like to call this stealth seduction. The reason why I call it stealth seduction is because there's no real hard tactic, hard line, hard word, hard mechanism that you're using in order to do this. But what's happening is that subconsciously, she's going to be seduced by the way that you carry yourself. Now, this is very, very important because what you need to remember is that as a man, your lack of emotional competence will always win her heart. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to frame that one more time and I want you to remember that your lack of emotional competence will win her heart. Think about this for a second. The most, the, the sexiest thing to a woman, the most attractive thing to a woman, especially for like long-term mating and potential when she's like, yeah, uh -huh, I want that one. That's my man right there. I'm gonna try to lock him down is going to be masculine drive and ambition. When she sees your purpose driven, when she sees your focus, when she sees you're willing to not bend or break or get moved off center, what happens is that she gets heightened sensitivity because she can look at you and go, oh, he's like a real man. What most men do when the woman puts them in that category is their emotional competence rises in order to match her energy and to fit the vibe. They get sucked into this sort of love narrative. Now, I understand that throughout this channel, I've talked very, very much about self-improvement. I've talked so much about retention. I've talked so much about all of these mechanisms to help you as a man. But what happens when you get down to the nitty gritty in the interactions with a woman? Well, I'm about to show you. Now, before we begin, what I would like you to remember is that I'm doing a free one-to-one -one consult where you can actually book a call with me to potentially be part of my masculinity mastered closed member mastermind group. Now, these men in this group have been using masculine behavioral therapy to completely brainwash and hook any woman that they want into love. Now, if you would like to potentially work one-on-one -on -one with me and become part of that program, you can fill out an application. If it looks like you're a good fit and if it looks like I can help you and you're fighting financially qualified, then you can schedule that call. And during that time, I will see if you're a good fit. If you're a good fit, I will enroll you into the program. But moving on, how do we get her obsessed with us? What is this stealth seduction? What, what is emotional competence? And how can we even put all of these pieces to the puzzle? Now, here's the thing, fellas, I've coached hundreds of men. I've seen hundreds of stories. And in these hundreds of stories, men have always said, but I feel like my belief system feels like this. Okay, I don't care what you feel because what you feel is irrelevant. There's a way that works. There's a way that doesn't work. There's a way to win and there's a way to lose. Once you can make that rational, decisive behavior, this is what I'm doing in order to win. Notice how you made a logical commitment. That right there in and of itself is masculine drive. I do not care about your emotions. She can't hurt you. This is the biggest thing. She cannot hurt you. And the reason why I say this is because you have to take a very good hard look at yourself and you got to ask yourself as a man, maybe you're between five, eight to six feet, five, maybe you're whatever the case may be, you should be bigger and stronger than a woman. If a 105 pound little girl can hurt your feelings, if that little 120 pound chick can really hurt you and make you that sad and make you cry, then there's, we, we got issues because she can't hurt you. Unless she puts physical hands on you and hits you, she cannot hurt you. This is the mindset you have to have. Now, I know you might be thinking, Casey, you're being arrogant. You're being a dick. Okay. I get what you're saying. Yes, I understand she can hurt you if she really gets down to it. You have to have this mindset, though. She can't hurt me. I'm a dude. Like, what, what's she going to do? Okay, if you can start to put that into perspective, what you have to remember at all times, if you want to make a woman that you're seeing obsessed with you, is that the more vulnerable you are the less in love she will be. Why is this? Oftentimes when guys heighten their emotional competence, they try to get their hearts to align with that woman. As his emotional competence rises, what's happening is that he's becoming more vulnerable to display his love, display his intimacy, display his favoritism towards a specific girl. The reason why she loves you less is because she now she she now sees that she can actually hurt you. If she can hurt you, she's going to go, hmm, this man is just a tad bit weaker than I assumed he was in the get go. Now, you almost have to be emotionally dull at all times. The reason for that is because if you're a bit emotionally dull, what happens is that not only do her tests and whatnot fly over your head, and it seems as if they can't phase you or you don't even notice, but it keeps you in the rational mindset thinking, constantly screening this woman saying, hey, is this woman a good fit? What do I even like about her? Is she bringing something to the table beyond a fat booty? 
if those answers start to check off, you can maybe adjust down the road, but you have to really, really screen and make her work for it because you have to remember most guys throw themselves at women at, women at their disposal. The next part throughout this little subcategory is her tests or her games need to just go over your head. It needs to be clear cut, it needs to be quick, it needs to be to the point. If she's in your car with you and she tries to change the station on your favorite tune, you're just like, nah, don't do that. That's it, three words, nah, don't do that. You're short, you're to the point. It's almost like when she tries to move you off center, when she tries to screw with you, you're not even in the mindset to use any sort of emotional competence, emotional energy to even give a shit. Because the more invested you're starting to get, the less she's going to realize that, hey, this guy's chosen or this guy has other options. If she sees women can push your hot buttons, that is not an attractive trait in the long run. Now, considering this is a social media age, what you're going to often see if you start to see a girl, especially within the first one to 10 times that you're seeing her, is you're going you're gonna to always see her phone blowing up. Her phone's going to have Snapchats, her phone's going to have potential other Tinders, her phone's going to have potential other text messages. She may be calling other people or other phone lines might be ringing into her number. Oftentimes when guys see a woman, they start to get the, the subconscious cues or the subconscious hints or the insecurities and it starts to come out. They go, hey, who's that? So how many other people are you talking to? This is what the guy starts to show. Notice he's putting himself in that frame first, going to be lowering her attraction step by step because that really is her job to fish if you're one of the guys who has other options. It's important for her to come to that frame and that standpoint. Since you're the man, your job is to remain mat rational and dominant 24-7. The more you start to slip up into that opposite frame, the less her attraction is going to go down. Now, the next subcategory into this is you got to understand most women feel no remorse. Most women feel no remorse for your pain. And that might sound harsh. And people will oftentimes, I just got off the phone with a client yesterday. He goes, but Casey, isn't that bad? That's not good. Yes, you got to remember, it is not good. And I don't know if it's because of women's, you know, programming today from how their upbringing was. You know, I'm not sure if it's just how they are naturally. But the, the truth is that 99% of them do not care. If a woman hurts you, oftentimes she will not care. And oftentimes she will even push harder to completely break the man down to the core when she knows that he's hurting at his worst. This is just facts. Okay. If, if you're going to be a 1% man, do you deserve 1% women that treat you perfectly? Absolutely. But here's the issue with that is that 99% of women are not hardwired that way. And if you are a man on a mission, you have to understand that to find a true woman that is very, very positive belief driven, I'm not saying it's virtually impossible, but you have your work cut out for you. Now, this is going to be the initial stage. The initial stage is when she starts to realize you're not moved off center, when she starts to realize you can flirt, you can tease without wondering who else is doing it with her or to her at that time specifically, what will happen is that eventually you guys will start to build some sort of bond. She may think that this guy just gets me. She may think that this guy's super chill, super relaxed, super not needy to lock her down because he's not in a scarcity mindset, or maybe he has other things going for him. The thing that I always tell all of you guys is I want your calendars booked. I want your calendars booked from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So that way you're so driven, you're so purpose focused, you're so passionate about what it is that you're doing. Oftentimes if her text or her Snapchat or anything comes through, you don't even necessarily realize it until later on in the day. It makes you look extremely higher value when you actually are higher value. Okay, we're not trying to fake anything here. As you build this bond, your job, your goal, because like I said, we're playing to win here. We're playing to win. Your job is to build this bond and continue it without necessarily desiring or fishing for commitment. If you can do this, this is going to put you in probably the top 5% of all men. Because all men by this point, 30 year olds, 40 year olds, most 50 year olds, man, they start, they start getting close to that woman. They start desiring her so much, they almost cannot hide the fact how much they really do love her. She will start to push buttons even harder then. She will start to see, hey, is this guy who he said he was in the beginning? And if she can nag you, if she can push those buttons and it moves you off center, you're really going to be in for pain because she's only going to amp up that side of her. Now, the next part, 
as her emotions heighten, you stay neutral. You stay neutral. She has to be asking for these questions. Where are things going? How do you feel about me? If you can remain indifferent, if you can actually show her that, hey, I really appreciate us. I think we get along great. I think that what we have is really awesome. But you, you tell her, hey, why don't, why don't we just take it slow? Why don't we see where things go? You tell her, hey, there's no rush. I ain't going anywhere. Are you? And you look at her, you say, are you going anywhere? I'm not going anywhere. Well, if we're both not going anywhere, let's just chill and have fun right now. You see, when you can be present, you're really, really going to crush it. Because your next move will always keep her guessing. She's going to think, hey, do I have to work a little harder to get his emotional competence up? Do I have to kiss him a little bit more? Do I have to whisper things in his ear and start to do all of these girly things to really get him bubbly too? When she notices that this is a real challenge, it's going to really make her mind be in a tizzy. Your next move that keeps her guessing will heighten her sensitivity and her emotions. Notice, we're still having the lack of emotional competence. We're competent and we're, sh we're, competent and we're sharp between the ears in every situation besides that one. Now here's the deal, as you build this bond, you have to understand your job versus her job. Your job is to stay present in the interaction at all times regardless of the outcome. You see, when most men go on a date, when most men hang out with a woman for five times, six times, 10 times, what they start to do is they start to get extremely dependent on the outcome. How much more sex can they get? How long until she's his girlfriend? All of these things. Like I said it over here, your job is to just say, hey, let's just chill right now. Take it slow. You're in no rush to do anything. The year's not gonna be over. And you can even say, unless you plan on, you can, you can, if let's say her name's Kayla, you say, Kayla, do you plan on dying anytime soon? Well, no, I don't plan on dying anytime soon either. Just chill. Let's just hang out here. Let's go get some ice cream. You notice how when you're in that cool, chill, relaxed mode, you are remaining masculine. There's a different type of masculine energy when you're on your purpose, your passion, and your drive. And when you take that small time to kick it with that woman, it's a different type of cool. It's a different type of relaxed. Okay, your job is to remain present. When she notices you're not focused on next week, or next month, or how fast you can lock her down, this is going to heighten her attraction even more. The next is you have to stay focused on that iron purpose. Your iron masculine purpose is ridiculously key throughout this. She's gonna think, hmm, we've had intimate time, we've had dates, he still doesn't make a whole lot of time for me throughout the date. I still can't stray him off his purpose. I still can't stray him off that passion. Man, he's really committed to what he does. Man, he has a lot of outside things going on besides me. Man, he has a big social circle. Okay, these are things that you want to start to do throughout your life. And when you actually have a life that's worth living, what happens is that women can accompany your life so much easier. The next is that you're just never moved off balance. Okay, maybe she wants to go out one Friday or Saturday night with her girlfriends. If you start to be the guy that is blowing her up, that's anxious about that, that is going to show complete lack of options. And if you've been doing everything right up until this point, that's going to be a big negative in your, in your hands. Her job throughout this entire thing is essentially just to lock down the big bad wolf. It's like beauty and the beast. You have to be that beast for her to be that beauty. You have to be that one that she's trying to lock down the big bad wolf in order for her to want to be the soft, sweet girl to you. It's polarity and energy. It's masculine versus feminine. She's also fighting for your time at this point. And why wouldn't she? You have to remember it's biologically hardwired in a woman to be more relationship committed or relationship focused than a man. And the reason for that is because as she peaks in age, she's going to want to lock somebody down. Women naturally want security and safety. Now, as you do this, she's going to be wondering where things are going at all times. If you can get her mind to spin and say, man, where are things going? Am I wasting my time with this guy? Is this guy seeing other women potentially? Is this guy doing other things without me? What do I have to do to make it seem like I'm this one girl in this guy's eyes? And when you can look past her beauty for a second and actually screen her, actually qualify her, say, hey, what does this girl bring to the table outside of how cute her smile is? She's going to work extra hard. When she works extra hard, it's just like anything. The higher somebody's investment is, the more they want to get that investment out. And when you do this, this is absolute stealth seduction. We're not saying anything spectacular. We're staying cool. We're playing calm. And as we do this, as long as we fit our role,
in true masculinity and polarizing our energy to just make it as if we're living our life with purpose and with abundance, she's going to fit her category of being sweet, soft, and submissive instantly. Fellas, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. And if you'd like to potentially be part of that Masculinity Master closed member group, you're going to want to book that call with me and get enrolled ASAP. We'll see you in the next one.